So iPadOS 26 dropped this week at the Worldwide Developers Conference, and I've been testing it out on this guy, my A16 iPad. This update was absolutely huge for iPad and productivity, and it was particularly good for this A16 iPad, which got a real productivity boost. Now you have the ability to be much more versatile in your multitasking. You can open multiple windows. You've got this handy new menu bar that's very similar to a Mac, and you've got some great new apps that were not available on previous versions such as the phone app and the journal app and of course preview. So I might be most impressed with the A16 iPad updates. I love that it can now do some real multitasking. And I actually see a reason why you might want to actually connect a keyboard to this iPad finally. I never could just spring for that Apple keyboard that was over $200 for this. I just thought this was more of a consumption iPad. But now things are different. So in this video I want to break down all the productivity features that are now available for this A16 11th gen iPad. I want to talk about the multitasking and multiple windows. I I want to talk about the new file management features. I want to talk about the new apps that are available and all the other things. Now you should note that this is the developer's beta, so this is very fresh, this operating system, and you're going to see some bugs and some weird things. That's to be expected. It's brand new. Now I also installed iPad OS 26 on my M3 iPad Air back there. I've got a video about that on my channel and my experience in testing that out. You can check that out. But without further ado, let's jump into this iPad and see what it has to offer. Okay, so first off, let's talk about multiple multitasking. So like I said, you can finally open multiple windows on the A16 iPad. You could not do that before. It did not support Stage Manager, which always drove me nuts. I hated that it's big brothers, the iPad Air and iPad Pro could do it, but you couldn't do it on this guy. You could do the side-by-side -side view, but that's not quite as good as being able to do what you can do now, which is pretty much open as many windows as you want. I just kept opening them and opening them, and it just kept working. And now you have Expose View, which is similar to the Mac, where you can flick up from the bottom of the iPad screen and see all the apps that you have on the screen at once. It's really easy to just quickly understand what apps and windows you have open. Now a lot of people on my channel when they watched my previous video were asking, hey can you still do side by side view? And the answer is yes, you absolutely can. In fact they built in a gesture for this. So if you have two apps that you want to open side by side you can just flick one to the left and flick the other to the right and they will just automatically set up. Now I had to practice this a little bit. It was kind of difficult at first. Sometimes I'd try to flick it. It didn't work. So it takes a little bit of practice, but once you get the hang of it, it's pretty easy. Something else about multitasking is that they've added those little yellow, red, and green buttons like you see on a Mac window, so you can quickly minimize or close a window or make it full size. I really love that. That is so much better than the three dots that they used to have in the previous versions of iPadOS. It was really difficult to click those and just manage that little drop down. This is so much better. Thank you, Apple. Now also, resizing windows is an absolute dream. It's so much easier, so much more responsive than it was in previous versions. It actually works like it should, like a Mac does. There aren't those weird limitations where it conforms to like a mobile size or specific sizes. You can literally make your windows whatever size you want. And in fact, when you drag a window away from side-by-side -side view, it automatically starts to get larger because it assumes you're going to want to look at it a little bit bigger if it's out front and center. So I couldn't be happier with multitasking on my A16 iPad. It's actually really nice. Now let's talk about what happens when you connect this iPad to a secondary display. Sort of like what I have going on back here with my M3 iPad Air. So I do have the Apple Studio display and I love using it with my iPads. It's an awesome display and it just works like it should when you connect it. Well previously the A16 iPad did not support secondary display. You could connect to one but it only mirrored it. You couldn't actually use it as a true secondary display. And unfortunately that is still the case. So I tried connecting this iPad to my Apple Studio display. It just mirrors it. It doesn't fill the whole screen. And even if you go into settings you cannot change it to where it acts as a secondary display. So I was kind of bummed about that. Now what's weird is in settings it still recognizes that you have the studio display connected. You can change the brightness for example. It's really weird so I wish it could just take that extra step and run it as a second display but I guess the A16 chip just can't handle it. However something cool that I noticed is my studio display serves as a USB hub and so I could connect my external drive such as my little SanDisk thumb drive here or my larger external hard drive and my iPad 
iPad picks it up and reads it just fine. I even connected that keyboard with a wire, so obviously the A16 iPad can handle different accessories attached to it with a hub and read external storage just fine. There's been a question on my channel about whether there's an eject button when you connect external storage. No, there's still no eject button. I've tried right clicking it. There's nothing like that. You just have to pull the drive out and that's it. So it makes me wonder if ejecting the drive was even necessary all these years like we've been doing on our Macs. Really weird. Okay, so let's talk about the apps that are new on this iPad. So now you have some cool new apps such as the phone app, which I was really excited about, believe it or not, because a lot of times I try to make phone calls from my iPad and you just don't have the same options. But now you've got the full functioning phone app on there. I really like that. I've also had some folks asking about the journal app. And yes, the journal app is installed on this iPad now with iPad OS 26. However, on this iPad, it's really buggy and I can't even get it to load. It just keeps crashing. It actually works just fine on my iPad Air. So I'm not sure what's going on with this iPad, but they just need to fix that bug. But it's on there. So you'll be able to journal and it should sync across the cloud if you're journaling on your iPhone and show up here on your iPad. And of course, the big one is the preview app. And that is the PDF viewer that is available on Mac and has been for a very long time. But it's now finally available on the iPad, which I am super excited about because I use PDFs all the time for teaching and project management. And so I tested it out. It's a little buggy when I rest my palm on it. It seems to zoom in and out on me when I don't want it to, which is kind of annoying. I'm sure they'll fix that. But other than that, it works as expected. So I can pull up the calculator app side by side, crunch through the math problems, write them in the worksheet, piece of cake. It's going to be awesome for teaching from this A16 iPad. And if students have this device, they're really going to love the multitasking functionality with preview. Now let's talk about file management for just a minute because it got a huge boost in this update. So first of all, you can tag your files as you could before, but now when you tag those files, you actually get the color coding on the file icon itself, which is actually really nice. It helps that file stand out amongst all the other blue ones. You can also attach a variety of emojis or just simple icons so you can really make your file stand out and get them organized. I actually really like that, but it's going to take me some time to use those icons to get that organized. Now, my favorite thing about file management is that they've added a feature that's been on the Mac for a really long time, and this is the feature to allow you to put a file on your dock. I love this. So you can simply pull up the files app, select a file, and drag it to the dock on the right side, and it will stay there. This is really nice when you're accessing files that you reference all the time, such as your downloads folder. It's just really handy to have that right there on the dock all the time. So you don't have to pull up the files app and dig through your files to find it. When you touch it, it also opens and fans out just like on the Mac. So you can see all the content that's inside. So I was really happy that they actually brought this to the A16 iPad. I wasn't sure if it was going to get that feature since this is the base model. But sure enough, they added it. Now let's talk about the menu bar and how that functions on the A16 iPad. So you do have a menu bar now and it pulls up for pretty much every single app. And I tried it out in pages. I feel like word processing is where you use that menu bar a lot. And it works exactly as you'd expect it to. And you don't need a keyboard. A lot of people were speculating that a keyboard was going to be required and it's not. You can simply use your finger and swipe down from the top of the iPad and it will appear. And then you can access the menus with your finger. You do not need a keyboard or a trackpad. And the menu has all the choices you would expect. It has copy and paste, for example. And I really love that it has paste and match style, which is so nice for the iPad. It was so difficult before to just get plain text or match the text that's in your document that you're working in when you pull it from another. So there's going to be some really nice features in that menu bar that are going to make it a lot easier to work on the iPad. Now, I did actually connect an old keyboard and mouse to my A16 iPad. Like I said, I don't have the Apple one. I've got a couple cheap ones, but I really wanted to try it with Apple hardware to see how it worked. And it works great. You actually get the real cursor now, so a pointer instead of that little annoying circle that everyone really hated. And so this makes me think that the keyboard that actually is made by Apple and goes with this iPad might be worth the money now, especially if this is your only device and you want to start doing real productivity on it. I've got lots of content on my channel about using the iPad for productivity and work. You can check that out. All right, I think I've covered the basics here. I'm going to keep playing around with iPad OS on this A16 iPad. I absolutely love this device. For the price point, you just can't beat it. And Apple is finally starting to introduce some modern features, especially the multitasking. It's so important. Let me know what questions you have about the A16 iPad and how it works with iPad OS 26. I'm happy to help you out. That's all I got for you. If you like this sort of content, please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.